Hi, it's Tarrant. And Stella from Mipul University on the Dice Tower for Pocket Playthrough video series where we play a few rounds of the game. In this video, we will show you Shadow Tactics the board game, game designed by Gergei Krupo and published by Antler Games. We are using a prototype copy of the game and so the rules and components may not be final. Let's get to the table! And here we are for our pocket playthrough of Shadow Tactics the board game. This is based on the actual video game. Shadow Tactics, which I play a little bit. It is a kind of like RPG sort of game. Um, obviously we are in Japan in the era of Tokugawa Shogunate and we are playing, so as in the video game, plays a shogun trying to put an end to the evil schemes of plotting daimyos which I will be playing. We usually play one versus one or one versus many, but because I'm playing only with Terran, so Terran controlling the three ninjas. Yes, the game will always play between three and five ninjas, uh, but if you're playing with fewer than four human players, then someone needs to uh, double or triple up, which is what I'm doing here. Of course. Uh, because of that, I, I have um, I started with a few more bonus cards here, which you'll we'll see later. So this game is played in a mission, so there are a few missions in this game, you always play um, um, user mission, and in this particular mission we are playing Suru Island, which is a pick up and deliver, so Terran as the shogun, as the ninjas, need to go to a to save uh, this person there, so this is the entry point, save a person there um, against all the guards, obviously um, defeat that guard, get the lock to open the gate, and then deliver um, that person safely into the exit gate. Yes, and the Daimyo can win the game by gaining, either by letting the time run out, so it's a 10 round game, which will track through this deck, or by gaining seven glory. And glory primarily comes by uh, having enough happen, so the guards have to see the ninjas enough to set off the alarms and hopefully have some alert guards find ninjas where they're hiding in the bushes. And if Stella can do those things seven times, she will win the game. And this is basically a um, simultaneous action programming game, which, which you'll see later. And let's get into it. So each of my ninjas has its own deck of action cards and I can program them in whichever order I wish. But I always, well, unless there is an alarm, I get the first program. So I'm going to take this character, the um, this ninja here, and I'm going to program one card like so. Now the next one is my turn. I can choose to do it now, or I can let Terran do his one first. But I'm going to choose to program that now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then I can see my my blue ninja. What I want to do there. So I'm going to play this one and I'm also going to play one bonus card. So I have four bonus cards and I can play them all at any time I at any time I wish. As long as I only have one per card, I can play as many in a round as I want. And these are important because there's actually not that many rounds in the game. There's only 10 rounds and it'd be very difficult for me to get all the way up there, rescue that guy and get to an exit point inside 10 actions. So uh, to that end, I can use these bonuses. They'll give me an extra action, but they'll also give Stella an action to fight back against me. So I'm kind of increasing the total length of the game, which I need, but it gives Stella more abilities. Like this one as well. So you can see that this is corresponding to that card, and this one is this blue ninja, and then this is your last one, which Taryn is about to place a card right now. Um, and this is, we've gone through the setup or pre setup, and we're placing these soldiers one person at a time and the, the loot tokens. Yeah, so the setup, as I say, we, we, we skipped over it for brevity in this video, but um, I actually got to place some of Stella's guards on the board. Essentially, all the things that got placed that weren't fixed for the scenario, we went back and forth and placed them one at a time. So some of them are. You know, guards are in positions that aren't really very tactically beneficial for Stella because yeah. I put them there. Yeah. And same for Damn these you. loot tokens. <laughs> Stella's put them way off where I can't really get them uh, because she had that opportunity. That's great. Now the resolution phase. Yes. 
So we go from top to bottom, and I will start by revealing and resolving this. So this is my pink ninja moving through cherry blossoms. So this is the movement action, and this is through cherry blossoms. This is a, a non-visible action. So I can walk across here, and because this is blossoms here, and even though there's a guard looking right at me, you know, I'm, I'm disguised as a geisha and I'm walking through cherry blossoms and no one is suspicious mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. So I get away with that. And you must end your turn in the, one of these bush bushes. Yes. So that was effective and I moved over a loot token. So I get to take that immediately. Whoops. As that rolls. And it's an effect here. I get to refresh my hand at the end of the round. So normally oh. these cards will dwindle. This would have been a good loot to get later, but essentially I will get this card back into my hand. Okay, so now you resolve your card. Yep. So the first one, so I have to resolve this from left to right. I didn't use any of my bonus card this turn. So first this one is to summon. So I can summon a Spearman. New Spearman. Spearman, sorry. And this is my barrack, so I need to do it adjacent to barrack. And there's only one valid location, so I'm going to go ahead and put it here. Yes, now you can put that at any orientation. Correct. Um, and this matters as well eventually when it comes to interacting with the ninja. So, and the second one is to order. So, I start with one, two, and three um, that I can use to order yep. officers. officers that I can use to order spearmans. And the spearmans that I can order needs to be adjacent or it can order itself. Adjacent means this is adjacent to that, this is adjacent to that. Yeah. Strictly speaking, it's within two hexes of within the- Within two um, hexes, thing, yes. Effectively, it means an, a most adjacent yard. So at this stage, I would like to get this officer to tell this payment that I just summoned to go here. And that's it. Okay. That goes to my discard pile. Now I resolve these ones. Now this, this goes okay for me. So this is the focus action. So you can see this card here has got a top half and a bottom half. And because I have done the focus bonus, I get to resolve the more powerful bottom half. So the first action here is I get to kill a guard in this yard and I'm using a throwing star. So it's, it's invisible. It's hidden. So if I look, I can pick either of these guards. If I pick the one in front, that will actually go very badly for me because his body will fall on the ground and this guard who is watching will see it. So even though I'll get the kill done, um, I will trigger a series of bad effects uh, because this guard has seen it. So what instead I can do, if I throw the star at this guard, this one is not looking, so I can actually get away with that, and it's a much stronger action. So I'm going to kill this guard with a non-visible action. Easy come, easy go. <laughs> and then that drops a body into the yard. And then I've got this action here, which is to hide a body, and it's an invisible action. So even though it's over the other side of the yard. I can do this action anywhere in that yard. So I can hide this particular body, well take it off the board. This guy is none the wiser. He doesn't even know someone was ordered in there with him. <laughs> uh, the bonus Stella gets for me having played that card is a patrol. So that means you can uh, move any one guard within its current yard. So in that case, I can probably help to turn this guard to probably see you. You can still distract me. Um, somehow, but it's probably, let's just leave it like that. So this means that this particular ninja is unable to move through this space without being seen. A little bit harder for you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it also means that it's harder to attack. So my action here, I've got distract and then kill but visibly. So what that means, if I tried to kill this guy visibly, he would see me coming and that action would fail. Uh, but I can distract that guard first, and then he'll be off looking at something else for me to kill him. So that is effective for me. So I can play uh, the butterfly action, which is to distract. 
So I take a white distraction token and I just pop it into the base of this guard here. Yeah, this so is also that he's still prototype, by the way. So um, it's already very good, um, although it's still prototype, but it is just a little bit fragile. Yes. And now I can take a visible kill action. He can't, he doesn't see because he's distracted. So he's removed from the game. And his body drops into the yard as well. But there's no one there to see it, so I've got a bit of time to take that away. And so execution phase is over and we come to the end phase. So we flip over an alarm card. Now I didn't actually make any noise in this particular round, so uh, I would need to have made four noise for the guards to have been alarmed. So that doesn't happen. Very good. Um, all the noise flips back over, which we, well, there were none there. We are effectively ready to go into the next round. All we do is we have to discard all of the cards that we used. And because I got this loot, I get to refresh my deck with my Geisha Ninja. All right, so new round of programming. I get to go first, and I'm going to play this one. My turn. Again, I will go now, not later. Let's put it there, thank you. Okay, then I shall play Let's see, I'll play this one, and I'll also add a bonus card, which will be this one. And then for this ninja, I shall play this card, and I will also play a bonus card. Mm, full of bonuses. Yep, which will be this one. All right, let's resolve. Okay. So first, down here, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that there are no guards in this yard to do a movement across grey uh, with, with visibility. So. Before I ruin your plan. Yes, exactly. All right, my turn. Your turn. That lets me to look at one of your cards. Let's have a look at the Geisha one, the lady one. Let's see. Ooh. Okay. So you're gonna move. Oh no, you're focusing. So you're gonna be distracting me distracting and then. Distracting someone and then moving visibly. Let's move it. I don't know what this one is, but I feel like it's this is too close together. Okay. Let's, let's just move. I mean, I've got this. I might as well, as well use it. Yep. So that's the second action there is confusion. Mm -hmm. it changes my yep. order. Because basically, I just wanna use the confusion. And that is. Definitely going to harm me. So if we look at what I've got here. I have played Move Across Cherry Blossoms and Rush. And you can see here, um, if I move across this junction here, the guard is watching. I was planning to distract that guard. I see. So this is going to go quite poorly for me. So I have to move, I have to attempt the move and it fails because I get seen. So what happens is this guard becomes alert. So we put a red alert token in there. And that means he is powerful for gaining glory later in the game if he finds, finds me. My action fails and I get attacked by that guard. So I suffer a wound. And this wound means that this particular ninja cannot use the focused bonus anymore. Not dun, until I've healed that. Dun, dun, dun. And then the guard yells out that he's seen something and it generates one noise. I saw this ninja, everybody. So that token just flipped. Yes. So that is very unfortunate for me. And then I also played the rush card. So the rush card allows me to play or it forces me to play another movement card from my hand. Oh no. And it makes a noise. So I generate another noise. There's a big chance of an alarm now this turn. And, well, I no longer have a Jerry Blossom card. I can at least play this uh, Move Across Grey card. It's visible, but there's no guard watching this space. So I, I do escape there. I at least get some movement happening. So that's, that's mildly positive. Okay. And then I resolve 
the Geisha's action. So this is a focus, as Stella saw before. I distract a guard and then I move across gray. I can no longer distract the guard I was planning to because he's alert, but there's also not a lot of reason to distract that guard at the moment. So I think it's going to be most helpful, given where I'm moving to, to distract this particular guard. So I'll pop that in there. And then I do my movement. It's visible movement, but there's no one looking at me. So I can jump across there. All right, and then I discard these. And that takes us to the end of round phase. So first we flip the alarm card. This time we only need one noise to raise alarm and there's two. So we are in an alarm condition. Which is bad for the ninjas and good for me. Yes, so you gain one glory as a result of that. All right. So you're one seventh of the way towards victory. Still far away. Okay. Uh, then we flip all of the noise back down to the gray side. Uh, stunned guards become alert. Distracted guards go back to calm. So for all the effort that went into this distracting this guy, mm -hmm. uh, he goes straight back to being okay. And there are no areas that have three guards in them. So now we discard all the cards we use and move into the next programming phase. So next round, we are in alarm. So that means Stella as the Daimyo gets to program first. Mm -hmm. In fact, must program first. I must program first in a special location that I can use. I will get this one and I'll also use a bonus action. Just this one. This two, okay. please. Yeah, thank you. All right. Then I'm going to use my orange ninja. I'm going to play this card followed by bonus. this bonus. Excellent. For you. We'll see. And then <laughs> I will use this ninja. So this programming, yeah. it's up to Tarrant which ninja that he wants to program first. And I'm going to use this bonus. And usually in general, in the alert status, I have different cards. So I've got, I can optionally use my red card, which is usually uh, more powerful, rather than the black card if I want to, which I did. Yes. And now the biggest thing I need to avoid in this round is ending up in a bush in front of an alert guard. Because this is the only time when I'm not safe in the bushes. Alert guards at the end of an alarm round are going to find me in any bushes that they're looking at. And that is not only going to give me wounds, it's going to give Stella glory points. So that's one of the biggest ways that Stella can get points in the battle against me. Alright, okay, let's so reveal. Let's reveal. So, Sorry, upside down. Here I am. Uh, I'm going to resolve this one first. And this is actually to summon my samurai. Hacha! Well, I don't know how what samurai <laughs> says. Like, um, actually, I'm going to put it this way. Um, just to s put a chance to see if you know I can see anything coming from there. Yep. So the samurai is a special, um, a special warrior who enters the game alert and can only be killed when stunned. So you've got to stun a samurai, then kill it. So very powerful, and I can see protecting my potential way out. And this is my barrack, so I have to uh, spawn it next to my barrack, which is this one. And this yard, it, can, it depends on how you rotate it. You can fit up to three guards there. And then your bonus is two orders. So with this order, I'm gonna to try to, I'm gonna to try to catch this, you know, she looks lovely, but I really want to try to, you know, catch what she's doing. And then with this one, I'll take this gut there and then move here. And also try to see what uh, this lovely lady's doing. Mm -hmm. And see, you know, maybe I can catch it because I'm going to have to start, or oh, get more glory by poking town on, in the bush, possibly. Yes, so now I'm being uh, watched from two sides, so this is a problem. All right. So that's your action. Now we'll come to mine. So first my orange, my orange guard is going to deal with this uh, gatekeeper over here. So he's holding a key and there is a gate here. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is use my sword to stun this gatekeeper. So we change his token over with the... He's still holding a key, uh, it's just now on a pink token. Is the slot, there's one slot, so it's a different colour in this yeah. prototype. So he is now stunned, and I can now take a visible kill action in this yard. Because he's stunned, he can't see me coming, so I successfully kill him. He drops the key, he also drops his body. I'm leaving a bit of a trail around here, but this is a bit <laughs> of a... This is kind of a safe spot because right. there is no... No guard over here. There's no easy way over there and That's guards right. would have to come around here to find these bodies. So I feel fairly safe with that. Okay. Just living dead body everywhere, Tara. <laughs> yes. So that's that one. And then uh, my bonus here is to take the key. So by taking this key, um, the way this works in the game, although I haven't walked up to this gate and opened it, I essentially now have free access through this gate. So we Very remove good. it from the board. Um, not to, let's not to forget I've got this action that will benefit you, which yes. is actually to do with helping Taren with the threshold. Yes, so there's a bit of commotion because okay. it's generally noisy. I now need to make an extra noise to keep the alarm going. Yes. You, on the other hand, you get a refresh at the end of the turn. Yay! So, so you now pick all your cards back up into your hand. Okay. But I've now got my way through here and I can go and help. And your next one is? My next one is the blue ninja. So I know that I have to... I programmed this based on Stella being able to know where I was. The only uh, movement I had left was yellow and blue, yellow and water, and basically I knew that I had to get my whole way through there or Stella would be able to pin me down. So I've got this action here, which is to move secretly across yellow, so even though these two are both looking at this yellow junction, uh, this particular ninja is good on yellow buildings, and I can zip through here without being seen. Secretly, okay, so that's actually a symbol of move secretly on that particular one. Yep, so it's move, it doesn't have the eyeballs, so it is no. uh, secret movement. Then I have played the rush bonus, and the rush bonus generates one noise and lets me play another movement card. Very good. So we flip a noise, and the movement card I'm playing is... Water movement. I've actually used all my movement. I really need my cards back. Water movement is secret again because you're swimming under the water, but it makes noise. So flip another noise token. Ooh. I've used two noise by yeah. swimming uh, rushedly here. Good thing but that you've I got manage. the extra threshold. Yes, I'm hoping that will help me out. But I am over here much safer and near friends, which is good. As your bonus, you get an order. This is actually a good turn for me, I guess. Remember Taran, we talked about, there's no one here, it's so far away. Well, guess what? The officer discovers the body and yell, hey, there's a body here. And put an alert token here. So now we have the three out of the four. That's an alarm token. And that particular guard now becomes alert. Yes, and then this is facing to Taran as well. Um, I will put the alert token on the guard. This is very bad news for me because this is an alarm turn and he is now looking straight at the bush I'm hiding in. So I am going to suffer as a result of this. Yes, unfortunately, Taren. So my final action is the Geisha's final card, which is distract and then visible kill. Now, I can't distract. I would like to get rid of this spearman here because he's alert and is going to get me at the end of the alarm phase. But you can't distract someone who's alert, so that's not going to work. And then I'd also like to get rid of this officer, but I could distract the officer. But then when I went to go and kill the officer from this spot, again, this alert spearman is going to see me and the action's going to fail. So the only place I can effectively use this card is on this spearman here. So first I distract the spearman, so it gets a distraction token. Now the spearman won't see me when I come out from the bushes to do a, oops, to do a visible kill. So 
that spearman is gone and a body drops to the floor. So now we do the special phase that only occurs at the end of an alarm round. And this is where the alert guards will search the bushes in front of them. So this spearman finds this ninja and this spearman finds this ninja. So Stella gets two glory for that. One Thank per you ninja much, who's found. And then also makes one noise for each of those. Uh, now we're already maxed out on noise. And then wounds those ninjas. So the uh, we get one wound for the pink ninja and one wound for the orange ninja. So all of my ninjas are wounded. These two can't do the rush action until or the rush bonus until they've been healed. So that's what happens in the alarm phase. Then we do the normal end of round phase. So we check the threshold for another alarm and then uh, we're at maximum. So an alarm happens again. This time Stella doesn't get a glory for that, but it does persist the alarm into the next round. So I have to be dodging these alert guards once again. Uh, then we check for victory. So Stella hasn't reached victory yet. I have not completed the mission. There's still rounds left in the game. The noise resets. Uh, we've got no distracted or stunned guards. So they don't go back to normal. And then our action cards are discarded and we move on to the next round. So that's three rounds of the game. And that's where we're going to leave our pocket playthrough for Tsuru Island. Uh, Stella's in a very strong position. I have not been careful enough and it's going to take me quite some effort to go through and, uh, and finalize that game. What we, what we haven't shown you, there's a few extra bonuses you've got. You know, we have some tool belt items, which are once off bonuses. Um, yeah, this one lets me hide two bodies at once. It was never strategically valuable in this particular game, but you do have those, and Stella has some of those as well. Yeah, this is my tool belt. Uh, this, I got this one, the one tool belt that's part of my setup purchase, which I chose. And this is also one deal, once off use only in the game. And because I am playing against one player, so no table talk, can't, can't really talk to himself otherwise if there are three players controlling these three ninjas means I can hear what they're doing what they're planning planning to do and then try to anticipate what they're doing um, so I've got these three extra cards as a bonus yeah so part of the part of the rules of this game which again we can't show you in a two player in a di there's there are specific rules about when the ninjas can and can't speak with each other and uh, Anything they say can be heard by the daimyo. They can't speak secretly or, or whisper to each other. It is a game with open table talk. And so, yeah, that's why at lower player counts, you need those extra toolkit items. And they are items that, they're items that allow you to flip cards face up to see them. So they are information cards. And this is, as we said earlier, this is a scenario. So it's scenarios made of different tiles that cl clicks together, uh, which is pretty cool. And the scenario book will tell you how to set up. Uh, there's Lord Yabu's Palace, Suru Island, which is the scenario we just played, yes. um, and so on. And you can play as individual skirmishers with a setup that's given in the book to give you some certain items. Mm -hmm. Or you can play a campaign and carry on your wins, successes, and loots from game to game. And this is very thematic. This is, again, this is still prototype, but I really like the mat. It's like rollable, kind of like Japanese theme mat. Um, artwork is really nice. I mean, this is still prototype, but I can see that, uh, you know, it's, a, it's already a really good prototype. Hopefully that was helpful to you. Uh, thank you for joining us for our pocket playthrough for Shadow Tactics, the board game. And that's our pocket playthrough of Shadow Tactics the board game. We hope you enjoyed this video. When we film this video, Shadow Tactics the board game is going to Kickstarter. So we'll put the link in the description below when it is live so you can check it out. If you enjoyed this video or find it useful, please help us by hitting that like button and subscribe to the Dust Hour if you haven't already done so. And if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please leave them in the comment section below. See you next time.